This painting that I'm working on, it was encouraged into existence by an art challenge where the theme is course correction, meaning to interrupt a bad pattern and change it into something better. I think the rule was that I need to avoid trying to fix any mistakes that I make um, and to incorporate the color gold in some way. This is meant to be a nod to kintsugi, which is the practice of fixing a piece of broken pottery by fusing it back together with gold. And that's supposed to turn a negative event into something more beautiful. I love this challenge theme. It actually came at the right time. Um, I was already inspired to make this image by a sort of whimsical use of the word fault line. And the context is that we all have a fault line <laughs> in our life timeline, maybe even multiple fault lines. And that's sort of where a single decision that you make or is made for you just kind of splits your life's timeline into a before and after, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. And something I've noticed that is really challenging is to try to initiate a fault line in your life on your own, you know, to recognize that you're sort of following a negative pattern or maybe something in your life just isn't right to be able to stop that pattern from continuing and to make things better i find that really challenging and kind of scary because you don't actually really know if that's the result that you're gonna get because i don't think fault lines are something that you can see until way in hindsight right for visual inspiration in this i was thinking about my orchid. My attempt at fixing my life involved meeting strangers at the flea market every weekend and showing my art. And there were orchids there and I coveted the orchids and the whole row of us sellers were buying the orchids. So I caved and I also bought an orchid even though the timing was not that great. <laughs> and we were completely set up for failure. This plant was packed so tightly in a dark pot with so much wet moss in it that when I removed the dying orchid, I couldn't even fit all the moss back into the pot. And this was only like a couple weeks after I bought it. And I was really heartbroken because I've always wanted to try an orchid and was really afraid. Even I wasn't really expecting it to die so quickly. <laughs> so there weren't any functional roots left. It was just a dead white stem with a few green leaves. And yes, I did try everything I could to bring it back during the creation of this painting, but I was unsuccessful and it died, which is really unfortunate because to keep a grown orchid alive is already kind of impressive. So just like imagine how much more special it would have been if I was able to save it. <laughs> As you probably know, I use small animals in place of humans. And because I wanted to relate the orchid story to like human story, just in general, I sort of merged the visuals together a little bit. You know, we got half of the Investicat beneath the fault lines where things were going wrong. And so we sort of decorated like the dead stem and the dead leaves and roots and stuff on it. And then beyond the fault line, when action is taken, he is blooming beautifully and just being, um, prosperous. As for leaving the mistakes, I mean, there's a bunch of mistakes. You wouldn't really notice them because I don't really talk about them. <laughs> so it's like, you know, there's colors in the wrong spot. None of the paper toll pieces fit where I was supposed to put them. And there's a lot of pencil lines showing. I really kind of just paint intuitively, so I don't really get hung up on mistakes as much. 